So before we actually get into the build, let's talk about the design for a second, where I'm going with this and what you're going to be seeing over the next several videos, including this one. This is the desk that I'm going to be building. It's going to be made out of walnut. Everywhere you see the darker wood here and this white that I haven't colored in, that's going to be maple. One of the distinguishing features about this desk is this slight curve that you can see coming across the top of the desk that also mirrors down in this lower cabinet. So all of these three drawers, as well as these two on the bottom, are going to be profiled with a curve, and the cabinets mirror it, or they mirror the cabinet, whichever way you, you want to look at it. Today, I'm going to be starting on this lower cabinet, and that's what this video is going to concentrate on. So let's go into a little bit of detail on that. The shell of this, essentially, is what I'm going to be building today. Now, you can't see it here. I didn't draw it into the plans, but this is all going to be dovetailed. And that's the bulk of the work that I'm going to have to do. So my goal is to build these four sides, the two sides, the top and the bottom, to get them dovetailed together. This is all going to be solid wood, so I'm going to have to glue up some panels to make this out of. So I will need to have several pieces to make up this 22 and a half inches here. Like all of my builds, I'm starting off with what I think is, is one of the more important pieces of building, and that's lumber selection. I've been saving this particular batch of walnut for this build. I bought it at an auction, and it is probably the best load of walnut that I've ever received. Luckily, the auction also worked out that this is probably the least expensive batch of walnut that I've purchased. The downside though was that it was still pretty wet when I bought it and I had to let it sit and air dry for several months before I could actually use it. Because of that, one of the things that I am going to be very careful about on this build is watching for movement. I've been watching the moisture content of this wood and it's been pretty stable for a while now, but I still am worried about having the wood move once I mill it down. So the goal here is to do multiple milling. So what you see me doing here is the first round of milling that's getting everything flat and straight but also oversized so that i have room to mill it again i'm going to mill it down get it in a oversized but rough shape and then stack it and leave it for a couple days before i come back to it all right so these have sat now and they really haven't had any movement at all so i'm going to go ahead and mill them down to their final dimension before i do that I'm going to go mark them all so that I can keep them in order. I did kind of cut them in a very specific way, keeping certain boards together for certain pieces. I've got to glue these up into panels to make the two sides, the top and the bottom of that lower case. And I just want to make sure that I'm keeping them in order. They're different lengths and um, such. And I've got them kind of matched together so that I've got the best grade in the right places. So I'm going to do that now. Before I actually glue these panels up, I have a couple things to do. Number one is to lay them out and organizing them as you can see me doing here. The second is to mark them for the biscuits that I'm going to be using. I'm going to be using biscuits just for alignment to keep everything flat when I glue them up. The next thing I need to do is to clean up the edges and I can match them perfectly to each other by double stacking them as I run them over the joiner like I'm doing here. This will make sure that if there's any deviation in how square those sides are, that they'll match each other once they actually go over the joiner together. Now I'm gluing up these panels using these panel clamps here in blue and I really really highly recommend them. I haven't found anything that keeps a panel flatter during glue up and they're, they're dead simple to use.
I've got these glued up now and I need to clean up the edges and something a little bit unique about the design is that my long grain is running the short distance of these panels so I can't take these to and put them in my table saw sled to clean up the edges they're they're just too big so what I have is my circular saw and I have one of the Craig AccuCut adapters that make it sort of like a track saw so I'm going to use that and I'm going to clean up one edge on each piece chances are it's not going to be perfectly square when I do that so after I have this one side done I'll take the piece of the table saw and cut the other side parallel and then trim up both edges square to those new cuts using my table saw sled that way all four sides will be square to each other and parallel to each other After I made that first cut, I looked at it and I'm not real happy with the quality of the cut. And that's fine. It served the purpose of getting it straight enough that I can use the fence. So what I'm actually going to do now that I've looked at it is I'm going to clean up the other side now oversized. So I'll leave it about an inch wider than it needs to be in all of these. Then I'll turn, turn it around one more time and put that side up against the fence and take it down to its final width. That way I've got two clean cuts that were cut at the table saw that I'm happy with the quality of the cut. After I do that, I'll come back and get everything cut to length. So I put the case together um, just to kind of lay it out and take one last look at it, make sure that all the sides are where I want them, that I like the layout of the green and everything else, and also to mark out a couple spots that I'm going to need when I cut the dovetails, which is what I'm going to be doing next. So this case is going to get kind of a half a curve along the front edge of this. It's going to come back about an inch over in this corner compared to this corner and I've marked that out here on my top and bottom so that I can ignore that when it comes to laying out my dovetails and make sure that my tails start with a half pin at that point and not up here at the front. I'm going to start this on this corner right here on this set of dovetails. The reason being is this is how it's going to sit in the desk. This is the inside um, where you'd be sitting here and then of course this is the bottom so if I'm going to make a mistake because I haven't done this in a little while, I want it to do it at least on the least visible corner. So this will be my chance to hide any sins, I guess, by having it in a spot that you won't really see. So I'll move from there up to here. Also, because this is on the inside, and then I'll move to the really visible outer side of this. So I'm going to pull this back down and start laying out uh, my tails. The first step of laying them out is always to establish the size of the tails themselves. Now I'm doing this here with a set of dividers that's set to 
the width of the tails plus the width of the pins, so giving me the distance from the start of one tail to the start of the next. I'll walk it down the board in one direction, establishing the left or right start point of that tail, and then back down from the other direction, establishing the, the other side. Once I've established the position of all of the tails, I go back and mark everything out with a dovetail gauge. Now I'm using the 1 to 8 ratio to mark these out and I'm doing my marking with a knife. You can see my marking knife isn't anything fancy, it's basically uh, an X-Acto blade and I'm just taking light cuts rather than trying to go too hard. A light cut will allow me to score it and then several passes will get me the depth that I want. My preferred method for cutting the dovetails is to use a small Japanese dovetail saw. I like the control that it gives me. There's absolutely nothing right or wrong about using one type of saw or another. I just happen to like cutting on the pull stroke, so this little one works well for me. When I cut this, I'm making sure to cut on the inside of my marked line. I can go back later and clean up to my mark with a chisel and end up getting a cleaner cut and a cleaner dovetail than I would right off of the saw anyway. The next step is of course to come back and clean out the bulk of the waste between the tails themselves. This is easily done with a coping saw. Just run through them one at a time making sure to cut out the correct waste. I always 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 mark out the waste on my dovetails because I have and probably will again cut the wrong side and ended up cutting the good piece the tail or the pin or whatever I needed out rather than the, the waste. With the bulk of the waste removed, I can move on to cleaning up back to my original scribe lines. Now I use the depth gauge to mark all the way across these tails before I cut them. And what I'm doing here is moving my way back to that scribe line a little bit at a time, only going halfway down on the board. Once I've got it cleaned up on this side, I will flip the board over and do the same thing from the opposite side. Now transferring the pin board is also done with a knife using small scores and then carry those marks down to the side of the tail board with a small square. And again marking out the waste at least for me is a critical step. Not only will it prevent me from cutting off the wrong piece but it helps me to make my cuts on the right side of my scores to begin with.
Okay, so I've got the first one done. This is the bottom. And for the most part, it came out pretty good. I do have a couple small issues. I've got this gap here, easily fixable. And I've got a couple other little small spots. Some of this actually will probably close up when I put glue on it and it swells, but I've got this little one down here that I'm gonna have to actually patch. That won't swell up. Probably gonna have to do a fix there and a small one over there. One thing I have noticed from my first go on this is uh, the spot I messed up the most was being nice and square on these tails. So I'm thinking on the next one, what I'm gonna do is cut a little bit inside my line and then clean it up with a chisel to the line and see if I can get a little bit more consistent across the tails. If I can get those nice and square and flat, then it's just a matter of transferring that over to the pin board. So I'm gonna move on to the next one. I, I, I changed my mind and I decided I'm going to move on to the other side of the bottom and I'll do that one since most of my mistakes were on this side on the, the tails. This is gonna be the bottom, so you'll, you'll literally never see these. But since that's the area I was making, I won't call them mistakes, but making the most imperfections, uh, I'm gonna do the other side. Okay, so two joints down, I got two left to go. I finished up with the second bottom joint last night, and I'm gonna start on my top joints now. These ones are gonna be a little bit more visible. Still not completely, because they're still under that desk. I'm kind of moving in order here. So this is the inside top joint that I'm looking at, the one that will kind of be near your knee if you're sitting there. So uh, again, the, your chances of seeing this top edge are pretty slim, but still, this edge will be visible and I've already made a mistake on this edge. I was laying out all of my marks and I accidentally marked in the wrong spot because I had an, an extra pinhole from using the dividers where I was trying to figure this out. I had used this joint to figure out the, the good width and the divider, so I'd walked them across a couple times and I wasn't paying attention last night when I marked them out. So that's when I knew it was time to stop for the night. So this morning what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start on marking these out the rest of the way, making sure I don't make any more mistakes, and then start to cut out these tails. I'm gonna do these just like the last set. I'm really, really happy with how those came out. Cutting wide of the line, leaving a little bit extra, and then going back and cleaning it up with a chisel that seemed to work out perfectly. So I'm gonna keep going with that and see where we come out. This is my last set of dovetails on this case, so <laughs> this is my last chance to, to get it perfect. Well, like I said, it's, it's not gonna be perfect, but this is, this is the, the joint that I'm really striving to get good. It, it's not the last set on the desk. I've got plenty more dovetails that I'm gonna be doing on the desk. It's just the last set of, of these ones, so I've had a little bit of practice, so this one to me is kind of a little bit of a measure, so I'm just gonna get to it. Just one more set to get through. last pin board so let me show you some of the details here of what I'm doing when I work 
So this is my knife line. And I think on this board I did a pretty good job when I was sawing out that waste of leaving just a little bit to chisel out. On some of the other boards it went a little bit wider and that's fine, better than getting too close. It just meant more chisel work. The same thing over here on the edge of the pins. You can see there's just a little bit of material there that I have to take off with a chisel. This entire project is going to be made available over on simplecove.com in the guild section. That will include the plans as well as some extras. I'll leave a link to the website in the description for this video, but head on over there and check it out. Well, that's going to wrap this one up. Thanks a lot for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this. I know that the video was a little bit long and I did things a little bit differently on this, in particular with this voiceover. So let me know what you think. I'd really appreciate any feedback you have on the videos. Hopefully you got something out of them and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.